Welcome to the Unraveling the Scriptures channel. It may sound extremely strange to most people, but when we begin exploring the similarities between the ancient Babylonians and the peoples of ancient China, we realize that the connections between these civilizations run much deeper and are far older than many would imagine. Believe it or not, there are biblical accounts that address the origins of East Asian peoples, revealing mysteries that challenge our conventional understanding of history. In this video, we will dive deep into the intriguing Sino-Babylonian relations, uncovering surprising details that most have never heard of. Get ready to discover hidden secrets buried in the sands of time, connecting the mighty Babylon to the ancestral traditions of ancient China. Share this video with friends and family who are thirsty for knowledge about the mysterious connections between the peoples of East Asia and the ancient Mesopotamians of Babylon. Sinites, from Babylon to China, the mystery of East Asian peoples. The term, Sinites, may seem unfamiliar to some, but it is actually a linguistic designation used to refer to certain East Asian languages, such as the Sino-Tibetan languages and proto sinu Additionally, it is an ethnic term that connects to biblical references related to one of Noah's descendants, who gave rise to various populations in the region, including the ancient Chinese. This descendant of Noah, known as Sin, was part of Canaan's lineage, and though most of Canaan's descendants settled in the land of Canaan, it is believed that the Sinites migrated further east. The land of Sin became associated with the Proto-Chinese people. Linguistic identifications of the term Sin or Sinim, in both Aramaic and Hebrew, often point to ancient China, revealing a fascinating connection between these cultures that many may be unaware of. This ancestral link is just the beginning of a much larger enigma that unites these two worlds. The prefix Sino is widely used to refer to this Chinese origin, as we can see in names like Xi'an, the capital of Shangxi province, Shanghai, one of China's largest cities, and even in cities like Xinyang and Sinyu. All of these names have roots that trace back to the term Sin, directly associating them with China. Now, when we talk about Sino-Babylonian relations, we enter the fascinating concept of Sino-Babylonism, which proposes that, in the 3rd millennium BC, the Babylonian region was fundamental in providing essential elements of material civilization and language that influenced what we now know as China. This may sound surprising, but this connection ties back to the biblical narrative of the Tower of Babel. In ancient Babylon, which today corresponds to the territory of Iraq, all the peoples were gathered together. It was there that God confused the languages, resulting in the linguistic diversity that caused each group to disperse to various regions of the world. This dispersion could have laid the foundations for the cultures and languages that would later develop, including those that formed Chinese civilization. This intersection of ancestral stories leads us to reflect on the profound interconnection between civilizations that, at first glance, may seem distant. Albert Therrien de la Coupery, 1845-1894, was the pioneer in suggesting that a mass migration brought the foundational elements of early civilization to ancient China. Contemporary researchers have used recently discovered archaeological evidence to support the idea that certain aspects of ancient Chinese civilization were brought from Western or Central Asia to East Asia, revealing linguistic connections between these regions. Le Coupery offered an intriguing interpretation of this migration in his work, The Western Origin of the Early Chinese Civilization, from 2300 BC to 200 AD, published in 1892. He argued comprehensively that Chinese civilization was founded by immigrants who arrived from an area corresponding to Babylon more than 2000 years ago. These immigrants, identified as Sinites, descendants of Sin, mixed with the descendants of Tagarma, according to a biblical perspective, and thus gave rise to the ancient civilizations of East Asia, including China itself. This hypothesis not only suggests a rich interconnection between civilizations but also challenges conventional historical narratives, leading us to re-evaluate Babylon's influence on the formation of Asian cultures. The search for these common roots opens up a host of intriguing questions about the origin of civilization and the mobility of peoples throughout history. The sinologist and philologist Albert Therrien de la Coupery wrote the following, open quote, Everything in ancient Chinese traditions points to a Western origin. 
No sinologist who has studied the subject has been able to determine any other origin for the Chinese than one from the West. It is through Northwest China itself that they gradually invaded the country, and their present greatness began from a very small beginning, about 40 centuries ago. Close quote. Le Couperie claimed that the Yellow Emperor was a significant tribal leader from Mesopotamia, responsible for a mass migration of his people to China around 2300 BC, thus founding what would become Chinese civilization. Known in China as Huang Di, he was considered a peculiar Shen. The hypothesis that he may have been a descendant of Sin is intriguing, and later on, I will explore the etymology in various meanings of the term Sin. Continuing with Le Couperie's claims, he noted remarkable similarities between the trigrams and hexagrams of the ancient Chinese Textijing and Mesopotamian hieroglyphs. Beyond Le Couperie, this perspective on the Mesopotamian origins of Chinese civilization also gained support from Assyriologist Archibald Sace, who presented it in the Journal of the Royal Asiatic Society. Le Couperie's interpretation, backed by Sace, was warmly received by the public, who were impressed by such a publication. This interpretation, suggesting a Western origin for Chinese civilization, even resonated in Japan, where it was introduced to China in an extensive Chinese summary prepared by Shirakawa Jiro and Kokubu Tananori. This view became known as Shilai Shuo. At the time, Chinese scholars were eager to uncover ancient roots for their nation, believing that figures like the Yellow Emperor Huangdi or Xin and other ancient characters were indeed historical and not merely mythical. They were quickly drawn to the historicization that the two Japanese authors advocated, seeking a deeper connection with the past. It is known that some Chinese revolutionary nationalists adopted Le Couperie's image of the Han race, associating it with an ancient and civilized dynasty in contrast to the Manchus, who had conquered China. The scholar Zhang Taiyan used the concept of Sino-Babylonism and the newly introduced theory of social evolution to explain how the introduction of agricultural technology from Western Asia combined with the patrilineal family system of East Asia, transforming China from a hunter-gatherer society into a feudal state that controlled a complex agrarian economy. In the 1920s, the discovery of Neolithic sites revived interest in the Western connections with Chinese civilization. Several scholars continued to develop the ideas of Sino-Babylonism, exploring the mixture of indigenous and Eurasian elements in early Chinese culture. This blend of influences was widely discussed by later experts. Ellsworth Huntington and Carl Whiting Bishop, writing in the 1920s and 1930s, applied hyperdiffusionist theories to China, arguing that all fundamental elements of early civilization originated in Western Asia and diffused to other parts of the continent including China. Scholars J.P. Mallory and Victor Mayer presented a series of arguments that align with parts of this theory. They highlighted the mummies discovered in the Darim Basin of Chinese Central Asia, dated from 1800 BCE to the early centuries CE, which exhibited Caucasoid physical characteristics rather than Chinese ones. While acknowledging the ongoing debate over whether the earliest bronze technology in China was influenced by contacts with Western steppe cultures, they conclude that the evidence tends to favor this hypothesis. Sinologist John Didier conducted a comprehensive investigation into what he calls the Eurasian world, exploring the mutual connections between ancient East Asia, China, and surrounding regions, including South Asia represented by India, and the Middle East with emphasis on countries like Persia and Babylon. Didier argues that these cultural and commercial exchanges were fundamental in shaping the foundations and early evolution of technology, cosmology, religion, mythology, governance, divination, and literacy in East Asia. He presents examples that illustrate the origin or inspiration from the Middle East in astronomical systems and calendars, as well as in religious figures like the Yellow Emperor, and in religious myths reflecting astrological observations common across the continent. In 2016, Chinese geochemist Sun Weidong proposed a provocative theory suggesting that the founders of Chinese civilization migrated from Egypt, implying that they were not truly Chinese in a strict sense. This view raises fascinating questions about the complexity of the origins of Chinese civilization and its interconnections with other cultures throughout history. Considering a biblical interpretation, it is important to remember that the land of Ham in sacred texts is often identified as Egypt, known as the Land of Ham. 
An intriguing detail is that the Hamitic lineages, especially that of Canaan, son of Ham, intermingled with the descendants of Japheth. The mummies from the Darim Basin, displaying Caucasoid traits, indicate this interaction, suggesting a common origin for present-day Chinese and many East Asian peoples. In East Asia, we observe a diversity of physical characteristics. Some groups have lighter skin tones and almond-shaped eyes, while others display a browner complexion, as seen in certain populations in the Philippines. These variations point to a common origin, which may be related to the Sinites, descendants of Canaan, and also to the lineage of Tagarma. This complex mix of ancestors highlights the interconnectedness between the different cultures and peoples of the region, reflecting a shared heritage that spans millennia. Statements from experts and Chinese geochemist Sun Weidong reinforce the idea of a common origin for all peoples that emerged from the ancient region of Babel, where languages diversified. This perspective suggests that everything is interconnected, and the puzzle of human history is slowly being assembled. Sun Weidong arrived at this hypothesis by conducting radiometric dating of ancient Chinese bronzes, revealing that their chemical composition was more similar to Egyptian bronzes than to ores found in China itself. He argues that Bronze Age technology, often thought to have arrived in Central Asia via land routes, was actually introduced by the Hyksos, a Levantine people who settled in the Nile Valley. This theory opens new possibilities for understanding the cultural and technological interactions between ancient civilizations and suggests a complex network of influences that shaped the development of societies throughout history. Now, let's explore the meaning and origin of the term, Xin. In Chinese, Xin refers to a deity, something spiritual, or an entity, expressing a variety of meanings that, while related, have distinct nuances. According to Dr. Suzuki, this is one of those words that defy direct translation. In Japanese, shin can mean heart, mind, or spirit, reflecting the interconnectedness of these facets in Eastern thought. In Phoenician Hebrew, sin means peak, clay, or mud. In ancient Akkadian, sin was the name of an important lunar deity, associated not only with the moon but also with knowledge. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what we've discussed here. What do you think about the connections between the Mesopotamians, Babylonians, and ancient Chinese? Do you agree with this view, supported by so many experts and the Bible? Please share your opinions in the comments. Thank you to everyone who has watched this far. God bless, and see you soon.